Football Unknown. Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Football Unknown Podcast. Now, now before we begin, okay, I know we've been gone for a little minute, but we're back. We have, like we're in a new location right now, so we're back at it. And today we have Jason Buckner. Jason Buckner. So before I begin, bro, tell everyone like a brief intro about yourself, like where you're from and what do you and what do you do? Um, so yeah, I'm Jason Buckner. Um, I go to school at the University of Michigan. Uh, I play soccer there, and and yeah, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, okay. Hey everyone, before we kick off this week's episode, I would like to announce that Football Unknown is now officially sponsored by New Tempo, a brand new apparel company that is dedicated to improving the accessibility of the beautiful game to all here in the U.S. They have just launched their all-performance tee for both men and women, and I think they're beautiful to train in. I personally like their accessibility, their elastic recovery, and their resistance. New Tempo is donating 10% of all earnings to the U.S. Soccer Foundation that provides children who live in underserved communities, enabling them to thrive in an active and healthy lifestyle through soccer. So make sure to check them out before the shirts run out. And be sure to use the code UNKNOWN to get $5 off your order while supplies last. Now let's hop back into it. Now, I'm going to kick it off with the famous question on the Football Loan Podcast. When did you first fall in love with the game of soccer? I'd say about 10, 11 years 10, old. 11? Yeah. Okay. What, were you playing like recreational soccer at the time or like just, or did you just jump straight into travel? No, nah, I was in I was in recess. Recess? <laughs> recess? Okay. Yeah, because I used to play um, American football oh. and I was just kind of like juggling between sports, kind of like figuring out like what I like. Mm -hmm. I did Taekwondo for about like seven oh, years. Interesting. Yeah. And then that's when I started playing a little bit more in recess, started yeah. watching like a lot of Neymar and Ronaldinho. Mm-hmm. And then I just started doing like whatever they're trying to do and whatever they're doing yep. in recess. And then um, one of my friends like noticed it. And then he's like, yo, like my dad has a team, like you should try out and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then I tried out, I made it. And then from there, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to take this a little bit more serious. Okay. And that was in Broward County or was that in? Yeah, yeah. Broward? That was in Broward County. Okay. So I'm from Broward too. So we got to, we got to rip the 954. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Broward babies. Bro. Yes, sir. So. What was the first club? So did you first started playing? Uh, it was uh, recreational, right? It was like the oh uh, yeah. Team. First, I started at like this thing called like I nine sports, and I that did the was, same thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember I nine. Yes, and that sir. was that was before that was before like my friend told me yo come play. So I yeah. just was playing that. I was playing American football. I was doing taekwondo. All three of those. Did Did you like taekwondo? Yeah, did I like did. And then it got to the point where it was like I was like. A, I think I was second degree or third degree black belt. Okay. So it's either like I start taking that serious yep. or drop it. Okay. So Wait, I, why? Like, why, why? Why? Why is it like such like hard options? Either you because it's like it was a lot of like time at that point because I was a third degree, so it just started being like more competitions, uh, and then like starting to go into like like learning what the instructor is doing, and yep. I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And, and I was still super young, so yep. I was like, yeah, I yeah, don't exactly. Do that. That's what. How like old were you when you when you stopped? I think it was like maybe nine. Yeah. Nine. Like nine. Do, you, do you think you still remember most of the, the, the skills? Oh, nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and then you said you're, you're playing football as well? Yeah, like, I was playing American that football. Age? I nine sports, same yep, thing. So yeah, everything. Did, did, you, did you like football? Like I liked it because I was like, I think I was the running back and then I also oh, played okay. wide receiver. So yep. I just like running. And you have hands too because, I mean, if you're wide receiver, you got to yeah, have, hand. have hands. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was fun. It was definitely fun, but I, did, I definitely didn't want to take that serious. Yeah, okay. I was just having fun. Yeah, and then, and then you, you ultimately chose soccer? Yeah. Yeah, and then it was first for the I-9 and then you moved up to? Sunrise. Sunrise. Yeah, Sunrise okay. Soccer Club. Okay. I think it's called like, I think it's called like Prime or something like. Oh, is it Prime FC now? I think it's Prime FC. Bro, you know, so when I first came to the to the U.S., like, okay, not first. When I came back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. for high school, yeah, I joined this 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 club called Say Soccer. Oh, okay. Para, it's Say Soccer slash Paraiso FC. Uh huh. And then we like we're like rivals with like Coral Springs, like United. I'm not sure if you remember. Coral yeah, Springs. yeah, yeah. And then like I think the year after that year after that year we joined to form Prime FC. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what it's called now. Yep, and, and then, it's like yellowish and blue. Yep, yeah, and then, yeah, and then, and then we like branched out, and then like they have in, they have like a team in Sunrise now and everything. So yeah, okay. it used to call like Sunrise SC. I'm pretty sure. Oh damn! I played on there for a couple years. Yep, and then I didn't really play much. I was more like a bench player, or whatever. Mm -hmm. What position were you, were you playing? I was in? playing left wing. Okay. Left wing. Yep. And right wing, and from there. 
I was like, I wasn't getting much game time. Yeah. And well, was thought, it was like a good team at that time? Yeah, it was actually a really good team. Okay. We had a bunch of really good players. So, like, I understood. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I was like, I, I want to play. Exactly. exactly. And then, so then the club started falling apart and because, like, the top players on our team were leaving, leaving. And that's yeah. kind of, like, what was bringing so much attraction. Mm-hmm. One kid went to play in Brazil. And then he, like, like started playing with the national team. A lot of people started quitting. And then a lot of people started converting over to Weston. Oh, okay. So, yeah, to yeah. Weston FC. And yeah. then that's when I was like, all right, yeah, like, I'm going to go to Weston FC. And then from there, I tried out. I played pretty, pretty well. And then I was pretty confident. And I made, I think it was, I don't remember the years because it was just like U18, U19. Like, I don't really remember yeah. what it was. But mm-hmm. I was playing two years up, like a year and a half mm-hmm. up at the time. And then um, on the, I made the academy team. Wow! And then the first season, it was it was mad good. The first season, I was starting like the first half of the season, I was starting everything. Wow! We went to a showcase. I played really well. Got invited to the U15 national team camp for nice. the U.S. Like everything. Okay. And then came back, and then we got a new coach because that coach that was doing well with us, he went to Orlando City. I think he's he was like the maybe like the sporting director over there now. Okay. So he took that opportunity, and then we got a new coach. And then I just started riding the bench. What? Yeah. So from there on, I was playing maybe like five minutes, ten minutes, no minutes, not even still making still on the wing? Yeah, I was playing position. wing. And then at that point, sometimes I wasn't even making the roster. Damn. And then next year came around, I played with my age group, had a decent season, nothing crazy. And then that year after that, I got an email saying like, Oh, you've made the two thousand three Academy. And then I was like, I'm a 2002. So I was like, this can't be right. Yeah. So immediately I called my coach. I was like, yo, hey, Brandon, like, what's up? Um, I just seen like a typo in the in the the email saying like I made the 2003 roster. And he was like, he was like, oh, no, it's not a it's not a um, a it's not an error. It's not a typo because um, basically this year they're allowing two 2002 players to play with the two. 2003 academy yep and it was kind of like a on and off thing so it's like one year an age group had academy the next year it would be pre-academy okay. so it was like an on and off thing and yep. they were like well it's either you play for your age group but pre-academy which is technically at the time it was probably just like ecnl so mm-hmm. it's just like regular club soccer yep and then or you play with the um, the age group under you in academy so then i was like all right because like i thought i was good enough to just play up one year and play academy with the older kids okay but i guess like obviously sometimes it just not align with the coaches so mm-hmm. i then i talked to my parents and they were like i mean might as well just stay in academy yeah like I, at least you stay in academy get more people looking at you anyways mm-hmm. and then that year i think i i ended like three fourth seasons maybe with like 15 plus goals and then maybe like six assists and then Towards the end of the season, like the last three games, I got moved up to the older team's academy. Okay. Uh, the first game, I scored the goal, the game-winning goal. That's when we went to the playoffs. Yep. So after after the game-winning goal, went to the playoffs, whatever. And then I got sick, couldn't play the playoffs. And then the next year after that was um, time for like my age group's academy. So we played that. The start of the year was awful, like awful. Damn. We had maybe like six games in, maybe like two wins, yep. ties and losses, and it was just like I was captain with um, one of my friends. Wow! So I talked to the coach. I was like, "Look, like we clearly have defensive issues. Mm-hmm. Like I'll play in the back. Like I don't mind playing the wow, back." Wow. Okay. And from there, he was like, "All right. Like if that's what you really want to do, then okay." And then I was like, yeah, yeah, like I, I want to play in the back. Mm-hmm. And then from there, first game, I had Real Salt Lake come and watch me. Played awful. And then, <laughs> well, did, did did you know like they were there before, like you played? He, my coach had told me that an MLS team was coming to watch me, but he didn't want to tell me what like, to well, put exactly. too much pressure. Yeah, but then it, it still kind of like yeah, the first half was just, it was just terrible. Like, yeah, it, I was doing too much thinking too much mm-hmm. my defensive like body like posture and stuff like it was just terrible mm-hmm. second half was a lot better but he had already left of course so of course yeah so that that happened and then for the rest of the season i just started getting more confident started getting a lot more like like um comfortable with the yep. position mm-hmm. 
then we had a showcase and then that's where like that's it's where i like, got stuff going yeah. okay i got maybe like 13 colleges from there damn okay all being d1 and then i was like because i had never got a college offer yep. college interest no text no nothing mm -hmm. so and then it all came after that yeah it all came after that yep uh, a couple of people on my team too had like a couple offers too because like we like the team just played really well wow and then from there, I started doing like official visits and stuff like that. Okay, so so before before we hop into that part, right? We have to track back, right? Because first you said you went to um, I think it was the first team. It was Sun yeah Sunrise Sunrise, right? Yeah. And then you weren't getting much playing time over there. Yeah, nah. But then when you hopped to the the, the second team, was the Western was like Western FC, yeah, Western, Western FC Academy. Academy. That's when you, you saw things started changing. Yeah, I started like, getting a little bit more playing time yeah. and it felt good. Why, why, why do you think really so? Well. Um, the coach trusted me. Okay. It was like, it was a thing with the coach and he was just like putting a lot of trust in me and like that felt good. Yep. That I was not getting at Sunrise because okay. it was like either, yeah, we know you're good, Jason, but like we think this kid's better and we, we trust him more. He's a little bit more reliable. Yep. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was true, maybe it was not. Like I don't really remember that certain detail. Mm hmm um but yeah it was my first years playing at sunrise so maybe it was true maybe it wasn't yep um but at sun at weston now i felt a little bit more confident in my ability um still had a lot to improve obviously yep. still do now mm -hmm. but i felt like i was doing a bit better mm -hmm. but my first year at weston like i had a lot of kids on the team that did not even like me really yeah so it was like it was kind of hard the first year yeah i left that out the first year at weston like i wanted to leave like the first year because I was, like, a lot shorter, I had braces, wore glasses most of the time. So mm -hmm. it was, like, yeah, I was, like, picked on a lot, mm -hmm. like, in training and stuff like that. So I would, I would tell my parents, I'd be like, yo, like, I want to leave. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't yeah. want to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not, now I'm not getting any play. It was the second half season. I'm not getting plenty of time. Kids on the team are bullying me most of the time. Yep. So I'm like, bro, I, I want to leave. Mm -hmm. So 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 what what made you stay? It was more just my parents just kind of saying, just, like, trust in it, like, you know, because, like, I didn't really tell them that I was getting bullied. I just told them I didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, so okay. they were like, it's your first year here. Maybe stuff will change, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Like, just stay, stick with it and stuff like that. And then after my first year, I had a huge growth spurt, like, huge growth mm -hmm. spurt. That's because I, I maybe came there and I was, like maybe like five eight five nine okay by like in two seasons i was like six foot six God one damn what were you drinking bro you gotta you gotta put me on that i don't even know bro because i can't even drink milk like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm lactose intolerant so yeah so it, it had to be the water then yeah it was yeah. something in the water something in the, water. the jamaican jeans i don't know oh the, yeah the, okay i see it it was the food yep but is that too much curry you gotta yeah. curry it right for you <laughs> but but yeah so after then i started to get a little bit more respect yeah started playing a little bit better more confident okay now walking into to sunrise still what like that was the very first time you played travel yeah so like what, what were some things that you learned right for, from that short experience playing for them well i had or, like i had like a lot of just like really good players on my team so okay. it's more just like Kind of learning, learning from, from them because, yep. like I said, like I was more on the bench. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like learning a lot of stuff and then taking that into like my own hands and doing like some individual training Absolutely. on the side. Absolutely. And then that's when I started to like notice like, yeah, I'm like, I'm obsessed with this because I would go home, watch Neymar, watch like a mm -hmm. bunch of videos on YouTube, go in my backyard, start doing it, made my dad buy a big goal for 11 v 11 in the Damn, back. Really? Yeah, we, we assembled it. I was begging for it for like at least two years and he finally got it for me and then you put it work after that I yeah bet. and then instead of because i i didn't ha i didn't have no driver's license mm -hmm. i couldn't go to the field or anything yeah. so i was like uh, can you can you like get me a yeah. goal at mm -hmm. least because my parents they're both like full-time workers and when i mean full-time like my mom's cardiologist so barely yeah. get to see her yeah. and my dad at the time like he's still a civil, civil engineer but at the time he had a little bit lesser position mm. so a lot more hours and work yeah so they'd get home at like seven or like nine yeah, ten so yeah, didn't really have time and then to... i didn't mm -hmm. i don't have no car no nothing yeah. so i was just like stuck at home and then yeah so it was either i ride the bike to the the field sometimes that field close to me at the time was always closed they always do renovation and the nearest other field was like maybe like a five mile bike ride. And I was like, oh, most of the time, like I got schoolwork yeah. to do or stuff like that. So it's like- So inconvenient. The, the timing mm -hmm. was off where I had training mm -hmm. and I had to get, so I, I couldn't do that. So yeah. I was like- So the goal, so you know, you and your dad got the goal up. The goal, we got the goal up. And that's when I started like putting a lot 
if what I was seeing in training, what mm-hmm. I was seeing online and yep. stuff like that. And it started like like I could see like little improvements, like my touch getting a little bit better, my okay. passing get a little bit better. Wow. So And 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 you said that helped lead to where you are now. Well well in the story, where you are now where you're getting thirteen college offers, right? Yeah. All that work is starting to pay off. Right, so you said the first year it was a, a little rough at Weston. Yeah. But then you, but then you know you, you broke out of it, and then now we're back to where you are now. What thirteen offers? Well, at the time. At the time. At the time. Yeah. So yeah, continue to continue about that. So, so after you, you got the offers, what? what, what so what yeah, after that? like I, it was like more of just like a shock. I was just starting to get like, cause I thought they were like scams, cause like I didn't, cause like obviously in this generation now we got like phones and coaches mm-hmm. can just like text us yep absolutely so like i was getting texts and stuff like that and like the biggest one i got like of those 13 offers was uva and i was like i was like yo and my boy got the same one oh. and we're like yo is this a scam or something because yeah. like we went to our coach and they're like no they hit us up we gave them like your information and stuff like that and then me and my boy we went on an unofficial visit because they wanted to see us at one of their camps mm-hmm. and then we came back and they were like so like What's the deal? And then that's they were kind of putting pressure on us to like kind to of commit, commit right, right like, there. Yeah. And we were still juniors. So I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know about yeah, that. Like we exactly. still have another season, whatever, like that. Talks died down a little bit because I told him like, oh, I'd let you know probably by like the end of my like my playing career and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. like I want to weigh in on my options. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when Inter Miami, after that season, I had a really good season. Okay. That that junior year. Yep. Like very good season throughout the whole thing. Um, by the end of the season, that's when like uh, Inter Miami was opening up, and they started sending a lot of scouts to West NFC. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that time. I remember yeah, that time. yeah. And then we would see, we would always see them at the games and stuff like that. They would talk to us, and then that's when Atlanta United started like battling for me as well, saying like, "Oh, like we know Inter wants you and stuff like that." Damn. And then so so you're not you're not only weighing it so you're not only getting like D1 offers you're getting like academies coming to you at that yeah point. so at that time I was like because I I had also from that that showcase got three MLS clubs wow so I had Portland Timbers Portland Timbers Houston Dynamo and Columbus Crew okay and I didn't want to leave okay and I knew there was a lot of rumors that Inter Miami was opening up and that yeah. there would be a team in yeah. Miami yeah, so I, I was like you know what, I'm yeah. just gonna wait. Mm-hmm. And then thank God they opened it in our senior, my senior year, and then I tried out, I made it, uh, made the team, and then I was set. I was like, okay, good, like I have this. Mm-hmm. And then from there now, I'm thinking like, all right, I'm getting noticed like a lot. Like I sat down with my parents and I was like, like obviously like I'm very humble and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. like obviously with Jamaican parents like that's the only thing you can be yep. you start boasting they'll be like all right they'll yeah, yeah, humble they'll, you real yeah, they'll, quick yeah they'll make they'll pipe you down a little bit so yeah coming from a very humble household like they're like okay like yeah like we always believed in you but like now a lot of people are believing you as well mm-hmm. and then I was telling them I was like I really want to like I always wanted to go pro but now I was like seeing that it was exactly like, like the realization of the realization like the possibility of mm-hmm. it so I was like look like I really want to go pro. Like, I, I don't know if I want to go to college. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, obviously, Jamaican parents. Yeah, they, they want you to, you know, get they, the degree. Get the de- exactly. So they were like, well, Jason, like, we really think you should have, like, a plan. So mm-hmm. let's let's talk about it. And then I was like, okay, but I still don't want to commit yet. They're like, okay, play the season, and we'll talk about it either mid-season or towards the end. Okay. So I played the season. I had, like— A winger still. No, no. Oh. I, I, cause remember I transitioned, oh, you transitioned to the center to left back, left back, right. In the so that I played left back, okay. um, there, but yep. then when I went into Miami, I forgot his name, but he was the one that had, I think the most like, um, shares in into Miami at the time. He's like, you're going to be a right back. Mm-hmm. Like if you're going to play here, you're going to be a right back. Damn. And then I was like, I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, I, I don't are, you, are you a righty or a lefty? I'm a righty, but I like to use you my left use for certain left. things. Interesting. Okay. So like crossing, I like to use my left. Um, like if I want to really curve, good. if I want to curve something, I yeah. like to use my left. Okay. So you can use both feet then. Yeah. Okay. Like dribbling is the only thing that you probably won't see me use as much with my left, but I'll still use it sometimes, but mm-hmm. not as much. Yep. But yeah, I'm predominantly right foot, but I just, I always love to use lefty and I used to do like with a little like size one mm-hmm. ball in the house mm-hmm. to improve my left. Like that's the only training I've ever Interesting. done. Interesting. Wait, wait, say, say, say that one more time. Like. In my house, like I had like a size one ball. Okay. And that was the only training I've ever done in my life to improve my weak foot. So your weak foot. Yeah. Okay. So I literally just go around the house, 
playing like I was like messy and mm -hmm. doing scenarios and stuff like that, using yep. like the pillars in my house to like act as defenders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that would like, I've never really went to the field and said, okay, like let's do a, let's do a like a, like a, a weak foot specific training. Mm -hmm. I've never done that, like ever. Okay. So that helped a lot. Yep. So yeah, I mean, like if you out. guys trying to like <laughs> work on your weak foot, that's I, that's a quick a quick little tip for you guys. Yeah, if you're trying to work on your weak foot, just get a little ball, start playing the house. Your parents might. Yell at you, yep. but but it, it is, is what, what it is. is. <laughs> like, it is what it is. Are you the only child? No, I have three only... siblings. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I have three. I'm the youngest, but I have three siblings. Okay, so what 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 are, what are they doing? Are they are they so, playing sports as well, or or they have other paths? It was a sports household, so like my brother played soccer up until college. He didn't play. Okay, and then my other brother, he played tennis, basketball okay. up until college as well. Interesting. My sister, she didn't do sports, but she did dancing up until college as mm -hmm. well. Okay, so it's a very active household. Yeah, okay. my dad, he still played. He played college at Cornell, and okay. then he stopped because, but that was like way back when. Mm -hmm. So he didn't want to go pro because like the pay was, it, it just started. The yeah. pay wasn't good. Yeah. And then my mom, she's an active runner still. She runs like marathons, half marathons, oh. all that stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you had it, the jeans. You had yeah, the jeans yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, but okay. yeah, so it was all good. And then yeah. at towards maybe like the end of the season, that's where I was getting close to like, all right, what do I want to do? So then I, I had one last showcase and I was playing right back, scored a goal, had an assist and just Dang, played like, off that game, yeah, right? I was just playing really good. And the goal was like a solo goal. It was really good. And then I had University of Michigan watching. And that, I had never talked to them. They had never hit me up. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, I have, like, maybe 35, like, D1 interests. No offers yet because I never went the, the to distance the, yeah. to get the offer. Yep. But 31 interests, 35 interests, the D1, like, teams, I'm talking to them, wow. whatever. And then Michigan come. And then I'm like, oh, damn, like, okay. Okay. That's a, that's a big school. Okay. And then UNC come, too, at the same time. And oh, I was like, how, did, how do you? Okay, I continue. And I was like, okay, like these are probably like my two favorite teams, just cause like the history they hold. Yeah, bro. Like the history that like one is Tom Brady, the other one's like mm -hmm. like wow, like like MJ, all that. I yep. was like, okay. And then, big I sporting schools, bro. Yeah, big sporting schools. So like in every aspect, like not just soccer, basketball, football, like everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then I talked to my parents about it, and they're like, whoa, Jay, like. Michigan's education is like slim to none. Really? And I was like, I was like, yeah, but like, I don't know. Exactly. Like, you're thinking more about the athletics. Like, I'm thinking more about the you athletics and they're yeah. thinking about the education. Yep. And I'm like, yeah, the education is really good, but like, the school itself is mm -hmm. like really good at soccer and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I was like, okay, like, I need to make a decision whether I want to do college or pro. Yep. So I sat down with them and they're like, all right, we'll support you if you want to go pro but commit to a school just in case. Okay. So that's when my coach is not going to be happy if he, if he sees this, but <laughs> I started talking to UNC more, and I was ready to commit. They gave me an offer, and I was like, okay, I'll let you guys know tomorrow. I'm going to talk to my parents. Tomorrow came, and I'm like, and I talked to my boy because he had an offer as well okay. for UNC, and I was yep. like, yo, like let's do it. Mm -hmm. And he committed before me, signed and sealed, whatever, and then I was going to commit the next day. I call them back and they're like look um uh -oh. we, we had offer we had gave we have given an offer to someone like months ago and they said they weren't going to take it yep. and they came back and this morning this. saying they would take it and we gave it to them oh my gosh and then i was like all right well after your boy committed yeah so then i was like okay um what does that mean mm -hmm. and they were like well you could take a gap semester okay and then come in january but we don't know if we can give you as much money okay okay and then i was like well i'm not gonna sit out a season exactly like, i'm not gonna do yeah, that like yeah, i already I took a gap year mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not, not again like I, oh i didn't take the gap year but i was planning on taking the gap year already mm -hmm. so i didn't want to cut my gap year short as well mm -hmm to do half and then just go in the spring I see that. yeah i was like to me i was like mm. they were mm -hmm. like yeah but you could like build with the team in the spring season and get comfortable with our area and stuff like that and i was like yeah but i don't think that's what i want to do mm -hmm. so i was really like sad because like the whole time like this whole committing thing i've been like staying away from it and exactly. i was finally like ready to it, commit yep. 
you know, you and your boy had your plans. Yeah, you we know, had our gonna, plans. We're going to go to UNC together at Rockets. Yeah. And, then, and then I told him the story, and he was like, bro, no way. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, bro, so I'm not going to go. Yeah. And at the time, I had narrowed it down to three schools, UC, UNC, mm-hmm. Michigan, and UCF. Okay. So now it was UCF and Michigan mm-hmm. because I wanted a school close to home. And in my opinion, at the time, UCF was the best option. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I talked to both of the coaches. And I hadn't even went on a official visit to either of them because I was like, I just want to commit somewhere and like just now exactly. try to go pro. Yep. So I got the I got the calls from both of them. Michigan. I only spoke to the head coach the whole time. At wow. UCF, I was speaking to the assistant coach. I spoke to the head coach once. Okay. But the Michigan coach, he was talking to me every day. He was a head coach too, so like yeah. you could tell like he wanted you. Yeah, he was talking to me every. I didn't speak to the assistant coach at all. Wow. And the head coach, he was talking to me so much, like, at least checking up on me three times a week, stuff like that. We're holding talks, this yep, and that. Yep. He's Jamaican as well, so he started oh, making that okay, connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he was, like, he was, like, getting down to it. And then he was, like, like no rush, like, take your time, whatever. And then UCF was kind of, like, pushing me a little bit. But they were also very nice, like, okay. very nice about the whole process. Yep. And then my parents were, like, okay, Jay, like, you got to make a decision. Like, you can't keep them waiting. hmm and then that's when I was like, all right, like, I, I think I'm just going to go with Michigan because, yeah. like, they showed me the campus. Like, both campuses were really well, like, really good. Oh, they have two. No, no, like, like UCF's oh, campus. Oh, and, yeah. yeah they okay. both were, like, really yeah, good. UCF but like, massive. But Michigan's, like, facilities were, like, slim to none. Mm. Like, I've never, like, they, they have some top, top facilities. Really? Like, better than some MLS clubs. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Okay. So, like. Once I seen that and mm-hmm. I got the virtual tour and everything, I was like, yeah, like, okay. this school looks lit. So, so in your opinion, which one do you think is nice? It's a nicer campus? UC- uh, or yeah. UCF's is bigger, yeah, okay. but Michigan, I think, is nicer. It's nicer? Okay. I think it's nicer. Yep. So that's when I was like, okay. And I officially committed. And then, um, then I had my first season with Inter's second team. Okay. So at the time... It was called Fort Lauderdale CF. Yeah. But now it's called Inter, Inter Two. Miami, yeah, two. So had that first season. First season was a little rough. Was I that got, was that were you with the same team like Ian Frey and all these boys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was with like Ian Frey. So we had I think we had like six, seven guys from the academy that got moved up. It was like yeah. it was me, Ian Frey. Two of them are on the team right now. Three of them are on mm-hmm. the team right now. Yep. Noah Allen, Ian Frey, Eddie Escona. Mm-hmm. Me, Frankie Raggio, yep. Kai Thomas. Wow, um, like, there's just like a lot of guys. That yeah. Moved up too. Um, this uh, Esteban, mm-hmm. and and I think that was about it. Oh, and then Andres, the right, one that yeah. committed with yeah. me to mm-hmm. UNC. Mm-hmm. So we had a lot of guys. Wow, that's, that's like a lot of talent, bro. Like, yeah, we had a lot of guys. Through throughout 2002s and 2003s, we had a lot of guys, and then they started bringing even more after yep. that as well. And then that's when, like, like stuff was getting real. And I was like, okay, I'm, like, I'm even closer now. Mm-hmm. So that's when I was like, I really want to push for it. What do you, like, really want to push for it. And then I got moved back to winger. Okay. So I got moved back to winger. Did you did you prefer a winger or like, I, d- right I don't really care. You like, really honestly, care? I don't really care because I do the same thing. That's a really good mentality, bro. So as long as I'm on the, as long as I'm on the field, I don't care. And yep. if I'm on the line, I'm comfortable. So left back, left wing back, right back, right wing back, left wing, right wing, left yep. mid, right. It doesn't matter to me. It's the same position to me mm-hmm. because whether I'm playing up top, I come back and defend. If I'm playing in the back, I go up and attack. Beautiful. So it doesn't really matter to me. Yep. But yeah, then the first game came. I don't think I played the first game, but then the second game came and it was home. I got subbed on, made my like pro debut, and I had, fi- I think I had like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, and he was like, go get a goal. And I was like, bro, <laughs> I got 10 minutes and you're putting this pressure on yep. me. And then I had one chance. It was close. It went out for a corner, but the game ended. I think we lost 1-0 to Greenfield, Greenville Triumph. I think that's the name. Okay. And they're like, they won the league later on. So like, oh, okay. it was a really good team. Yep. And then throughout that season, I was getting like, um, maybe like five like zero to like 15 minutes a game i started okay. one game pr- like played pretty well came yep. off and and that was like you finishing off the the, the season for the for the, the academy. academy but like it like transitioned into the start of the second team's season okay so i played that full season yeah that full season um 
on an amateur contract because I obviously couldn't get money because I was committed to mm -hmm. college and I didn't want to. Oh, okay. I didn't want to mess that up. Mm -hmm. And then second season came, renewed my amateur contract. And then I told them, they had told me, we're going to be giving you a bigger role. And then I was ex very excited. And then the first, so we had preseason for four weeks and then transition into the season. Okay. I missed all four weeks of the preseason and I missed the first week into the transition because of mental health. Ah, uh, dang. So I like, before the- I, I mean, but you were, you were still playing though, right? Like even no, you weren't playing at all. I wasn't playing at all. Like I just needed to take a break from yeah. everything. Yeah, okay. Like a week before, week before preseason happened, that's when my mental is just like terrible. Mm -hmm. Do you get to share like 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 what what you were going through at the time? Oh, well, I was I was young, going through a heartbreak. Uh, and okay. Like it was my I was my first girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I cause like I had never really like got into any of yeah, that did, stuff. Did, did, she, did, did she meet the parents? Yeah. Oh, she met the parents yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a year and a half relationship. Like it was it was oh, pretty yeah, long. Yeah. Okay. So it like affected me a lot mm -hmm. because like I had never experienced love. Mm -hmm. I had never had a girlfriend. Nothing yep, like that. Absolutely. So they hit me hard, and then it was like one week before preseason, mm -hmm. and we were doing like a pre preseason for like certain players that wanted to like get ready. Get ready, yep. So like I was playing, like I was going there for maybe mm -hmm. like three weeks, mm -hmm. and like when it happened that whole week, I tried playing through it, and I was just playing terrible. Yeah, I was bro. really like, like my heart rate was like like too much i was like to the point where my coach would bring me to the side he's like why are you like why are you tearing up and i'm like i'm just going through a lot coach and then at that end of the week we had a sit down and he was like jake like i really care about your health and you just don't look good okay. like maybe take take some time away yep. and like take your time don't rush it was that the the michigan coach telling you that? no that was that the was um into miami coach yeah that was the into miami two coach okay and also, my head coach was aware of it as well. Okay. So they were both so, helping so, so me out. It was just communication. Yeah. Okay. My family was helping me out. Friends were helping me out. It took me about, like I said, it took me about like a month and a half yeah. or so. Yep. But it took me like a solid five weeks to just, just like battle separate yeah. myself and just battle it out. Yeah. And then got diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and then I was on pills mm -hmm. um, from there um i started feeling a lot like a little bit better like good enough to come back mm -hmm. came back and then by that time it was like maybe like the start of the season already and it took me like like maybe like eight weeks okay. just to like turn my coach's head a little bit yeah because not even like those eight weeks i wasn't playing well those eight weeks i came back and i was playing really well and then like, it just got progressively better and better mm -hmm. and better and better and better mm -hmm. and then after those eight weeks he's like i noticed you but like you gotta you gotta put into consideration you missed five weeks. Yeah. These guys have been here five yeah. weeks more than you. Okay. So I was like, no, I understand. So I wasn't making the roster most of the time. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where it was like I was doing super well now. Like I was balling out and training. Really? What 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 do you think, you know, changed that momentum in like it was just more me just like getting over that curve and being like, All right, bro, like Yep, just grinding it out, just, you know. Like like bro, you let someone affect you and like mess up your season. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. get get it back. Yep. I was like playing really well. I started holding like maybe like conversations to the end, like end of training. Like, like look, coach. Like, w what can I do? Like, I want to play. Yep. Like, what can I do? Like, Absolutely. I'm not okay with not playing, and I don't want you to think that. Mm -hmm. But I also like respect your decision. Yep. But like, I want to play. And he was like, he's like, well, first things first. I notice you. Like you're doing really well, and like you just gotta keep doing it, yeah. And like wait for your opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I like, okay. saw you, bro. You, you you know you had your head down and you were just grinding, bro. You were just improving. Yeah, and like the like we were doing like okay, like in and out of the season. Yep. And like even like because at the time it wasn't really just academy based how it is now. How you see like the full lineup is just academy players. Yeah. It's not. It wasn't like that. Okay. We had players that were like older and stuff like that, and like experienced players mm -hmm. because we played in USL League One. So we had some older guys. Okay, yeah. We had a good amount of older guys. Yep, I see that. And they would come to me and they're like, "Yo, you're you're doing really well. Like, just keep your head down, cause like we want you on the field. Like, keep working, cause like you're doing really well." Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where it was like a couple more weeks, maybe like another four weeks or so. And then I was like, "Bro, like, what do I got to do to get on this field? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm outperforming like our fullbacks right now. Really? And at this point, I'm fourth string." 
So they were like, at, then I had more players coming to me, and they're like, yo, did you make the roster? And mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, I'm not even on the roster. Like, I'm not traveling. I'm not even I'm not even on the roster. Like, because when you're not on the roster, you train, you train the day of with the people that don't make the roster. So you're you're basically having a training in the morning in the morning with like six guys. Oh, damn, what, what what do you guys even do? Like, they do a little pickup or something? It's like you just like a little... It was like it wasn't a good training, yeah. and then it was mainly like fitness based. So they oh, make you do okay. a lot of running at the yeah. end to get like match like as if you played a little mm-hmm. bit in the match. Yeah. And it is it was what it was like. I wasn't gonna skip it. I wasn't gonna bitch about it. I was just gonna. Yep. I was gonna go there, put my yep. head down, and do the same thing. Absolutely. And obviously, I was like pissed off because I would like never really make the lineup no more, nothing yep. like that. Yeah. And then I made I made the the lineup again, and I was like, okay, bet. I knew it was I knew it wasn't gonna play, but at least I made the roster. You made the roster. I traveled, made the roster. Yep. And. I was so eager to play because I was like, yo, like I know I could be doing some crazy stuff mm-hmm. right now. And then I started making it a little bit more consistent now. And then I think it was Revs, New England Revolution. I came on with like 10 minutes and I played really well. Like I almost got an assist. Like I, I was playing really well mm-hmm. as a winger. Yep. Next game, I didn't make the roster. And I was like, what? What? I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I asked him, I was like, so like, you know, like coach, like on? like I said, like I really respect your decisions, but like I at least wanted a while. I didn't make the roster mm-hmm. so I could like you work know, on yep. it. And then he was just like, I just didn't think that game was best for you. We we needed different players for for different roles, and we just didn't see you fit for that. Mm-hmm. Usually that just means we didn't roster you. Yeah, in the nicest way possible. Yeah. yeah. So just kept my head down. Now it's coming to to the the end point where I gotta leave to go to Michigan. Mm. So I gotta got like I have around like four games left. Yeah. And that's when I had my official visit at Michigan. So I was like, hey coach, like I have my official. And then he was like, okay, will you be back in time for the game? And then I was like, yeah, but like I would maybe only have like two trainings in. And he's like, that's fine. As long as you're here with the two trainings, I'll roster you and as long as you play good, I'll roster you. Okay. So I was like, all right. So I go, come back, and then we have Atlanta United like Atlanta United's um, team mm-hmm. away, mm-hmm. and I made the roster, but I was on the bench. And then around around the 60, 68th minute, the right back got injured. Oh, so he's like, "Yo, warm up." Yep. And then I went in the game, played really well. Then I had we had the reverse fixture the next game at home against Atlanta again. I started that game. Okay. Played really well. Had yep. to come off like a little bit after half mm-hmm. because I got hurt. And then they were telling me like, "Yo, you played really well." The only thing he was a little bit mad at, mad about was that um, like I came off for like, it wasn't a like a significant injury or anything, but it was like a hard knock that okay. I just I yeah, felt like I like, just really couldn't play through mm-hmm, and play well mm-hmm. and give my team the best exactly. performance I could have. Yep. So he was just like, um, at the time, he was like, um, well, we had like Beckham watching and stuff like that, and it just didn't look good. And then I was like, I was like, yeah, I know coach, but like, I was thinking about the team, not myself. Mm-hmm. And he was like, he was like, no, I can respect that and stuff like that. Um, and he was like, are you still leaving in Michigan? And I'm like, well, coach, I'm committed. And like, I have like an obligation to go there mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then he was like, are you sure that's still like, still that's, that's what you want to do? And I was like, well, coach, for me, I think that's the best thing. Cause I need a new environment. Mm-hmm. I need to get my back, my full confidence. I need to get like a really a team that like believes in me and stuff like that yep. consistently. Mm-hmm. And I feel like just leaving Florida would just help. Mm. And then so he, you just laid it out there for me. Yeah. And I was up. realistic with them. Mm-hmm. He was like, he's like, no worries. Like we're going to stay in touch. We're going to keep watching you and stuff like that. Yep. And then I left. Okay. And then first season with Michigan started basically all my games yep. as a left back or right back. Mm-hmm. Played really, so you were playing both? Yeah. Okay. Played really well. Had a game-winning assist in the Big Ten quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. We went all the way to the Big Ten semifinals. Nice. Played in that. Like we had it. We had a decent. My decent first season. We didn't make the NCAA tournament. Yeah. And it was very biased reason why we didn't make it because I think it's like forty something teams make it. Okay. And we were like ranked thirty eight, and so- we still didn't make it. How does that work? Yeah, I, 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 to this day, I really don't understand how, like, 
the whole college yeah, system works. I mean, I don't, I don't get it, bro. It's like, very confusing. Yeah, I keep asking questions to like different people, but I mean, you can't really fully. I don't. I yeah, don't it's very it. confusing. So like, I didn't understand why we didn't make it, but it was like some type of reason that like, Bowling Green, even though they were like ranked forty something, they had like one more, like win against like a big, big like name a top, school? like a top twenty five school. Okay, so they were allowed to go in. It was. It's weird. It's weird. That's how it like works. Yeah. So. Basically, every time you play a big school, you want to have like a win or a tie, because mm-hmm. I guess it counts it boosts, towards more. Yeah. So that's why we didn't make it. Damn. And then this past se- and then after that season, that was your freshman year. Yeah, my freshman year had a good season. Fall. Yeah, and then transitioning into spring or like the halfway season of fall. Okay. I felt my knee like just like just very painful, but I played throughout the whole season with it. Okay. I didn't really think of it, think of like much about it. Yep. Whatever. And then towards the spring, it got worse. And then we checked in with the doctor, got a bunch of tests. And they were like, well, you have like a little tear in your meniscus. And then, but they were like, it's not to the point where it'll be like you're out for like four or six months or something like that. It's just, you need to get it like cleaned and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you can play the rest of the spring season, but as soon as you're done, you're shut down. You have to get surgery. Yeah. And whatever. So I got the surgery. I was out for like maybe two and a half months throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, came back around, came back around maybe like July. Okay. Trained a little bit with my USL two team with Weston. Yep. Um, and then as soon as I came back, I was experiencing knee pain again. Like came back to the, the same, the same, same knee? knee. I was experiencing knee pain again. Yep. I was telling my trainer, I was like, look, this feels exactly the same. Like, I felt good for maybe, like, two months. Okay. And then in preseason, it was feeling the same. Um. Then after that, season started. I was like, you know what, like... And season started, still knee pain. Yeah, still knee pain. And I'm like, you know what, like, I don't... I'm not missing this season. Yeah. So did, whatever did you, it is... Did you, like, check... Okay, so when you, like, contacted your doctor, did they, like, give you an idea of what was up before you went... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a bunch of, like, rehab and stuff like that. Okay. And we tried going the non-surgical route first. So that's okay. why it transitioned into the season. The season. And they allowed me to play because it wasn't, like, Anything causing me crazy. too much pain. Okay. And then played the season, played really well. I thought I had a good season, but, um, like, the team and I, like, we just didn't do enough. It was one of the worst seasons Michigan's ever had. Okay. Uh, we didn't make the Big Ten tournament. We didn't make NCAA, and we finished last. Oh. So we had a pretty— and That was last year, right? Yeah, we had a pretty tough season. Mm-hmm. We had some individual players still pop out and, like, do well, mm-hmm. but as a collective— we yeah. just we weren't well, making was it stuff like click. Uh, injury issues as well, or just like it was just like we had a lot of injuries, but it was chemistry. more it was more just like we we couldn't find the pieces to either score or just like we were conceding consistently one or two goals a game, and we were just not scoring enough as well. Yeah, we were creating a lot of chances. Yep, we had most of the possession in yep. every game. Yep, we had a lot of shots but just not conversion finishing, rate, yeah. and then we always had one or two mistakes that caused that us the us goal. goal. Okay. So it was like on the attacking end and the defensive end, we just needed to sharpen up a yeah. bit, and it just wasn't coming. Yep. But, the, the, but the middle ground, it's like the middle, you know, it's like the operation is just like, like almost there. Like it was almost there. We needed something just to click in the defensive yep. side and click in the attacking side, mm-hmm. and we would have been like, we would have been a team. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like the team was still good, but like, it, it it was what it was. Like, we, we didn't have a good season, and we grinded. Like, the boys grind. I was shut off as soon as the season ended. So I've been I've been shut off ever since, mm-hmm. since November. So I've been out for about seven and a half, eight months. and Just, like, working, like, you rehab or whatever? Yeah, because after that, we after the season ended, I just got a load of MRIs, different type of tests. I don't even mm-hmm. know what the tests are called. <laughs> yep. I just had so much stuff done to me that I've never, ever, like, seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And first thing to come back first was I had a tear in my meniscus. My I had, like, a some, like, swelling in there because of the tear. I had, I had to get a fatty pad removed in, like, patella. Oh, and then I had some cartilage that needed to be fixed as well. Yep. So a little bit more than last summer. So it took... It still took the same amount just to like shave around and clean it up. Mm-hmm. So I got that in January and then by March, no, I got that in January, but th- all throughout this time, I was like, my hip was killing me ever since like the end, the end of the season. Okay. 
and we couldn't figure out why. We tried to do rehab on it, and it started feeling good. The second that I got cleared to play in December, like from November, we started doing rehab on both of these. Yep. And then December, as soon as I went home, I got cleared. I played in two pickup matches. And I was like, yeah, no, it's, like this is not right. Came back, got the surgery on this. And then throughout that whole time I, I had surgery on this, we were getting I think I was in and out of the like hospital and doctor's office. Like, I think I was going there at least twice weekly. Really? Yeah. So, and we just couldn't figure it out. And then we finally took like this weird test where it's like an MRI, but they inject something into you so they can see really like okay. super deep. Yep. And then they came back and they're like, "Yeah, you have a labrum tear. You have, you have um like a bone like bone in your hip like growing." So you have extra bone, which is causing it to like, every time you like rotate like in the in the joint, mm -hmm. it just keeps clicking, and that's what you feel that sharp pain. And then I was like, all right, so like, what do we do? And we tried the rehab, didn't work. Okay. And then that's when in March, uh, we finally got a day for the surgery, and I think it was like the labrum itself was like four months, reshaping the bone was like two, so in total six months. Damn. So now I'm just in that process right now, mm -hmm. and I think I have about a month and a half, two months left. Yeah, so. but but after the surgery, it, it has it felt better? After yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like obviously the first two months were like crazy, yeah. painful and yeah. stuff, and like I couldn't walk the first two months. I was on crutches, whatever. So that was really hard. I even went back home for like four weeks because I just needed to like be in a good mental space because. Mm -hmm. I was by myself. Yeah, bro. I can't carry anything because so I have many, to walk on so crutches. So many like appointments and in and out of the doc, bro. Let, let's let's be real, okay? Anyone who's going in and out, or, or anyone who goes to the hospital, bro, it's it's depressing. It's yeah. really depressing when you go in. There. It was really depressing. And, being, and then having to go in and out of there like constantly, bro, like it 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 takes a toll, bro. Yeah, it was hard. And like I live with only one of my teammates. Like okay. it was just me and him yep. in an apartment. Yep. And like obviously, like if you're a college athlete, you have little time for yourself. So he couldn't. He did as much as he could to help me, but I almost needed like someone around me at all times because like I couldn't move that much. And even when I could, I have to walk with the crutches. So mm -hmm. like, how am I supposed to hold stuff? How am I supposed yeah. to make food? Yeah, all that stuff. So yeah. I talked to my coaches, uh, yeah. and they were like, "Yeah, like you, you can go home. Just make sure like with your teachers that they'll allow you to do online. Mm -hmm. They're all understanding. They let me do online. Nice. Okay. Shout and out to Michigan, man. Yeah. The yeah. whole spring semester, I don't think I went to class like more than two weeks because I had this. Yeah. So I was on bed rest for about like a week and a half. And then after this, I was on bed rest for four, like almost like four weeks. Yep. And then I had another month of only crutches. So I'm like, I'm not going to keep going to class yeah, and i couldn't yeah, drive bro, yet that's either a, that's a smart idea so i was like i'm gonna just go home yeah do online mm -hmm. and they let me do online came back maybe for like a whole two weeks and finished up class mm -hmm. and then i went back and then throughout this whole time i've just been doing just been pt yep. three times a week getting the body right man yeah. getting the body right getting the mind right yeah exactly you I, know? I still do right now i'm doing a whole bunch of stuff i'm doing my pt okay gym sessions yep Therapy sessions for my mental, okay. and then sports psychologist as well. Oh, so yeah, I'm trying all different things to kind of just like boost my. I'm doing fine, mm -hmm. but like like I said to to Crow earlier, like I feel like everyone can use a therapist, whether you absolutely whether you're a hundred percent in the mind and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Talking to someone that you feel that can give you professional help could always make you even better. Yeah. So even though I'm doing perfectly fine right now. I still like to follow exactly. up my therapist. Keep on getting better, one percent every exactly. day. Exactly. I just try to get better and better. Yep. Um, I'm just, I'm just so excited to get back on bro, the field. Bro, I mean, I, I, I mean, I could just, I mean, bro, anyone like being out for so long and just like you know, like, cause when you're when you're going through like therapy and rehab, it's like you're trying to get your body ready for the season. Yeah. So when the season's approaching, I mean, the nerves start to kick in. Like, yeah. you know, you feel ready to go. So like, how, how like how confident or how like ready are you for the season well so as of now like i said i still have about like a month and a half two months left mm -hmm. uh i've been jogging i've been clear to start jogging and stuff like that yep um probably within about a little bit less than a month probably end of july yep. i'll start doing more agility work okay, yeah and then that's when i start slowly progressing into like ball work mm -hmm. more like more like heavy duty work mm -hmm. and then they're gonna start running me hella and yep. then all that stuff yep. getting my fitness back 
and then I'll start being like a neutral in training. Okay. And then I'll start being like a little bit more incorporated and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So probably around the end of August, early September, I'll be cleared. So okay. I'll miss about at most like three games. Not bad. So yep. I'm not complaining with that. Mm-hmm. Cause like I could easily be out for the season. Yeah. So okay. I'm I'm just so excited. Mm-hmm. And like just, and I think this will be my biggest season yet, and I'm super confident. And it's your junior, that. it's your junior year, right? So yeah. you still got one more after this. Yeah, like, I still have one more after yeah. this. But like, but this, if you you can feel I, it. I this is the one. It. Yeah, this I can one. feel it. I'm gonna be watching, man. Yeah. Now I have, now I have a reason to watch Michigan, right? Now I have a reason. Yeah, to watch and, and I so and I I could be playing up top this season too. Oh, okay. At, on the wing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. Now, let's now we we've, we've covered you know the football story. Yeah. I think I think there's something else we gotta talk about here. Talk about the the fashion, cause I I mean everyone who follows Jason knows that he is big into the fashion. Yeah, I love. Fashion. You know what I'm saying? So talk to us about that. But like, when did you fall in love with fashion? Like, when when did that become a thing? I mean, like I've always like 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 I've always loved fashion because of my sister. She's okay. always been heavily involved with modeling and stuff like that. Yeah. So she would try to put me on when I was in like like elementary and middle school. Like, oh yo, like this is Bape, this is Supreme, like all that stuff. When mm-hmm. it was like super super big. Yep. And well, not super big, like getting big. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, why is that so expensive? Like, yeah. this shirt is like $300. Like, what do you mean? Like, no. Mm-hmm. And then as years went on, I see it just growing and growing. And like, everyone has it now mm-hmm. and stuff. And she's like, I'm telling you, I'm trying to put you on. Dang. So she so she, she knows, man. She knows yeah, the game. Yeah, she, she knew the game. She still does. Yep. And, she, and then that's when I started getting a lot more into it, more invested around like high school. Um... But I was always like so like self conscious about my figure. Okay. Because I was at that at that time I was either short and skinny, and I had like glasses, braces, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I was not the typical like look for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And then when I got when I started hitting my like growth my spurt. growth spurt, yep. I was still skinny as hell. Yeah. And now I'm tall, so I'm like stuff look weird on me. <laughs> yeah. So. But then I started growing more into mm-hmm. my body. You know, like, you're fi- filling up the... You yeah, know. like filling up and stuff like that. I'm still skinny, but like yeah. I, now I just don't care. Yep. Like I, at the end of like high school, I was like, bro, like I love fashion. Like I honestly don't care what anyone says. If they Absolutely. like what I'm wearing, okay. If they mm-hmm. don't, okay. Well, like, yeah, I really don't is. care. Yeah, yeah like, I'm wearing... It's my clothes. Exactly. Like, I'm like. <laughs> so I felt good about it. I started getting a lot more into it. Started buying new pieces. And, like, buying pieces that people wouldn't really get. And then that's when I went into my freshman, my gap year. And then I started buying hella stuff. Okay. And that's, like, where I got my closet. And then when I went into freshman year, I, like, flushed all that out and got, like, a new closet. Oh. Because I was, like, kind of transitioning to, like, a different more different style, more, like, minimalism and streetwear. And, okay. like, minim- street mar- streetwear minimalism. Okay. So, like, combining the both. Oh. So that's when I got the idea yep. more later on in like freshman, like the end of my freshman year. Yep. Like I want to make a brand. Like I want to make a clothing brand. So with everything that I've been through, like I'm very heavy on mental health mm-hmm. and I'm very heavy on fashion. Absolutely. And obviously I'm in sports. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to build the bridge between all three with a clothing brand. Okay. So I made a, I made a clothing brand called The Blurred Vision. The Blurred Vision. Shout out to The Blurred Vision. Shout out to Blurred Vision. Yeah, like I, it was. It started with like just an idea. Obviously, I didn't know much, so I was like, "All right, let me grind for like a year and yep. learn the whole thing." Absolutely. That's Obviously, to this do, day, man. to this day, I don't still know learning. everything. Absolutely, still it's, learning. Always gonna learn. Always yeah, gonna learn. always, always room for learning. Yeah, but I know a good deal of it now, and I started it. I started the whole process of like designing and making it, manufacturing all that stuff about six months ago. Yep. And you're you telling me, you know, you're taking these, like, sewing courses or something Yeah, like I'm that? taking sewing. I sewing? Even in spring, I forgot to mention, even in um, that spring semester, everything I was taking was for my business. Really? Yeah, so I was taking a marketing class. Mm-hmm. I was taking a graphic design class. Okay. I was taking a science class because I needed to. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I was taking a photography class. Oh, uh-uh. yeah. So yeah, I know, I know yeah. how to take the pictures and stuff you like that. It, you pieced it perfect, bro. Yeah, you I, was, it perfect. I, was, I was piecing everything together. Like, I've always known how to take photography, but, like, like for the people that actually know, like most of the time you don't know what is on the camera. Mm-hmm. Like you don't know what this button does. You don't know yeah. what the like f- how to focus it and yep. all that stuff. Yep. So I started taking classes like that, and then obviously doing my YouTube research and TikTok and all that stuff. Absolutely. Um, and then yeah, that's when I felt confident enough to like really speed up the process and like start dropping. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I went through a great deal of different manufacturers because that's yeah. just how it is in the start. Yep. 
um, found it, got the bulk order. Didn't come when I wanted to come because of all that switching up manufacturers. So the timing was a little bit off. Yep. So I'm dropping now. Now I'm dropping like hoodies in the summer, okay. which is not ideal. Yep. But now that we're back on track, I got some cut sleeves dropping soon. Okay. I'm making one of one pieces myself. Yep. But yeah, like I just I want to see where this goes, and like I really want to just kind of create a vision and a comfortable brand for people to like put on and feel comfortable about themselves, confident, mm -hmm. and kind of just go and express themselves in clothing. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So what what about the the one the one on, the one in one collection? Or? Yeah. So basically, I'm gonna like start. I haven't uploaded it yet on the site, okay. but I'm gonna start having a a section on the site of different pieces that you're allowed to do a customization with so either you send me in the fabric or you tell me what fabric you want and then i'm gonna have like different styles of clothing like clothing options okay you tell me your size you tell me what you want and i'll be like all right and i'll only it'll be very very limited it'll be about probably maybe like yep i mean obviously that you know to start it off like yeah maybe like day. one to three uh, one of ones a month. Mm -hmm. I've already had a bunch of people asking me like, "Hey, like I want this, this, and that. Wow. Can you do this for me?" Yep. And as of right now, I don't want to do it yet because I want to perfect my craft. Um, I've made I made a couple pieces so far. They've came out really good. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I want to probably use the rest of the summer to just get a little bit better, experiment harder things. Yep. And then be like, all right, y'all can like. Like putting your orders now for that. Yep, absolutely. But but yeah, and then the brand itself, the Blurred Vision, the name came basically just from like me having at one point in my time a vision that I knew I wanted, but it didn't seem it seemed a bit mm, off. Okay. It seemed like I didn't I, I didn't really see the like twenty twenty with that vision. Okay. So it was a bit blurry and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and that's where the mental health part aspect comes into it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make a brand called the Blurred Vision and kind of bridge that mental health aspect and we have a brand logo which is like a like a a stick figure but mm -hmm. it's like not a stick figure like a like a thick one okay and it's blurred yeah. so like the one in the middle is like you see it like very clear mm -hmm. and the two off to the side is blurred and it's kind of just like symbolizing like you're one person dealing with many things as if you were many people mm, okay so i see it so yeah that that's the brand logo yep and like i said we just want to make like clothing that people are confident in absolutely that let's say that day you're feeling mad anxious mm -hmm. but you just put your your hoodie on you go about your day you feel confident you feel comfortable and then that's that wow that's, that's really good, man. Yeah. Wow. So uh, are you going to do like any, any p like sporting pieces as well? Yeah. In the I'll, future, I, you know? I, I'd love to. And uh, right now we're actually working on a, on a jersey. Okay. Um, And it potentially could collab with Michigan. Oh, okay. So, collab. so yeah, we're, we're, I'm trying to work on that right now um, with the athletics and, and the whole Michigan department. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see where it goes because that would be... That'd, that'd be really, really cool. That'd be really dope, man. Really and then, dope. yeah. Wow. So, okay. I'm excited, yeah. Interesting. So is there like, any piece of advice you would like to give like aspiring footballers, whether it be, you know, the boys in Broward mm -hmm. or anyone around the world that like wants to make it to the next level or wants yeah. to play D1 soccer, play pro? Any advice you'd like to give them? Yeah, like I always tell people that like um, come in my DMs and stuff like that. I have a lot of people daily come in my DMs like, oh, hey, like I'm injured. How do I get this confidence mask? Or a... Hey, I just got hurt, like, how do you deal with it? How do you cope? And that's a lot of the questions I get. And obviously, like, some tips on how do you get D1 and whatever. Mm -hmm. But mainly, I get a lot of people asking about similar stuff I've been through. And really, it all comes down to just being grateful for where you are. Because, okay. I mean, like, in reality, like, we don't know if we're going to live the next day. Absolutely, And bro. you're you're here stressing. And I'm not saying you can't stress about it. I stress about it, too. Yep. But, like... You're stressing about something that like will get healed. Mm -hmm. You could have a car accident where your your knee is shattered. You yeah. will never play again. Yep. So if you're getting news that you will play again be after grateful. an injury, just be grateful. Yep. Just be grateful. I've been out for eight months, mm -hmm. but I've been grateful this whole time because I know at the end of my my duration of recovery, I'm gonna be back. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna be able to play back the and game. ready. I have you know. friends that had to quit and find a new. Dang. A new, yeah, a new, absolutely, a new thing to do. We, we've heard some of these stories here, bro. So, so it, it's it's just be grateful. Like obviously acknowledge 
go through the pain and stuff, mm-hmm. but know that you're grateful because absolutely. like someone out there has it worse than you. Yep, absolutely. So like, yeah, you're gonna have these obstacles, but like, there's always gonna be a way to get past them. So like, Amen. just just stay confident. Yep. Stay up. Do things. And what I do to 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 kind of like stay confident and like motivated is do stuff out of your comfort zone. So if all you really do is football, 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 football. All right, now now you have this time while you're injured to start doing stuff that you don't mm, have time for. Absolutely. So I don't have I time see. to really make clothes as much as I can when yep. I'm when I'm heavily in football. Mm-hmm. So I make clothes. I listen to music more. I go on walks more. I hang out with my family, my friends more. It's just I start doing stuff that yep. I can't really do. The little do. things, man, too. The little know? the little things matter and yep. it goes a long way in absolutely. helping your like your mental yep. get motivated cuz if you're happy that's that that is the biggest factor in being motivated Absolutely. and being confident and stuff like that. If you're yep. not happy, it feels like your whole world's crashing down. Yep. If if you're not if you don't have a solid ground, yeah. then basically like there's going to be a point in time when you're going to be like hey, then what am I fighting for? Exactly. Right? So I think it's the little things, make sure you know you like you, your relationships are in check and everything is fine, your health is in check. And then everything else will follow, bro. And it kind of it just it bleeds into soccer. Absolutely. Because if everything around you is going well, you're doing good. Your attitude towards, mm-hmm. even though you're, let's say you have a six month injury. Yep. The attitude to going into PT, you're like, I'm a dog. Yep. Like I'm a dog. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm gonna get through this PT. Absolutely. And then I'm gonna come tomorrow. I'm gonna do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna do the same thing after that. And Absolutely. I'm gonna just keep doing, keep doing it. And the, by the time you know it. You got one month left. You got a couple weeks left. And, you're and then you're burning cleared. fire, ready to go, man. You're cleared. You know, you and the family rekindled. Everyone's safe. Everyone's good. You're good. And then it's just, when the season comes, just bam. Ready and then now you're playing ball again. Yep. And if it's a case where, like, you missed the season, there's another season. Mm-hmm. Like, it's never too late. There's always, like, Jamie Vardy. He started playing when he was 27. Yep. And he's a legend. Yeah, bro. Robertson. He started playing when he was, I think, about, like, 25, mm-hmm. 26, late. He's a Champions League winner. Yeah, like he's on Absolutely. Liverpool starting Absolutely. left back. So yep. it's like there's many, many examples out there. That, like it's really never too late. It's never so too if you late. think like you've seen like these 16 year olds that are getting picked up from from Brazil and now they're going to like Madrid, mm-hmm. like yeah, that's like damn. Yeah, like, I wish that was me. But like don't compare yourself. Exactly. You got a different Create journey. Your own path. Exactly. You got exactly. a different journey, and that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. You're gonna see these 15 year olds, these 14 year olds. It gets younger and younger by the day. I see these these kids. Oh. And it's like you really don't know. Like, there's, I'm not, I don't want to spread any like negative energy onto them, and I wish them the best. But like, mm-hmm. you don't know how their career is gonna go. Exactly, but anything could happen at any point. Exactly, you could be 20, 26, and you get your first contract. Mm-hmm. They could be 14, they get their first, but you don't really know what happens exactly. when they're 20. Yep. So it's like you really got to take into consideration different aspects. But mm-hmm. just the main thing is just focus on create, you, create, yeah, create your own journey, create yep. your own path, yep. and just focus on yourself. Don't compare yourself. Perfect. Well. Jason, it's been an honor having you on, bro. Thank you for trusting me and coming on the podcast, bro. Thank you for sharing your story. It's a really inspi- inspiring story. And I'm, you know, the whole football alone family is going to be looking at you in the, in, the, in the fall. So thank you for coming on the podcast, bro. And it was an honor having you on. Nah, I really appreciate you having me. And I, I, love, I love football alone because I've seen a couple, a couple of your videos. Mm-hmm. And appreciate that. You guys are boy. doing a good thing here. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate that. Have a good one. You too. Thank you.